Do you ever find yourself stuck in a escalating pattern of negativity in your relationships? Or do you find yourself constantly punishing and correcting your child? Today we're going to talk about the relationship ratio and how to best influence others in a positive way. When I worked in residential treatment, I had a client who I'll call Andy, who always seemed to be getting into trouble. It seemed like she was almost intentionally trying to get under the staff's skin. She'd be late to school, or she'd hold up the group by not getting her chores done, or she'd intentionally do something disruptive to the community. And when the staff weren't watching her, she'd pull the other kids into conversations about drugs or sex. During our weekly treatment team meeting, the staff would vent their frustrations about Andy. They were getting really upset and worked up about it. So they decided to respond with a little bit more strictness. So they decreased the amount of down time she had, they increased her supervision, and they decreased some of her privileges. Now these restrictions on her free time were probably appropriate and logical consequences. But the next week when we came back to treatment team, we found that they weren't helping her behaviors improve. Instead, her behaviors were getting worse. She started to sneakily self-harm. When we did allow her to go on shopping outings, she tried to shoplift. She even stole the chef's nutmeg and tried to get high from it. And she started lying to her parents and her therapist about how things were going. So since the staff had her on their radar, they were even quicker and they were quick to apply a consequence. So they stopped letting her go on outings. But the more they corrected her, the worse her behaviors became. After a few weeks of this, we finally realized that we were contributing to the problem. The more we corrected and punished and controlled, the worse her behaviors became. Our focus on the negative was contributing to the very problems that we said we wanted to correct. The harder we tried to fix the problem, the more we fed it. Today we're going to talk about the relationship ratio. John Gottman, a famous researcher who loves to quantify relationships, has found that healthy relationships have a ratio of at least five positive interactions for every one negative interaction. While differences in conflict are normal and natural for every relationship, in healthy relationships these difficulties are mixed in with a healthy dose of positive interactions, even while discussing conflicts. Our brains are wired to avoid danger. That means that our brains are attuned to notice anything that may be negative or threatening, and it's going to have a strong emotional and physiological reaction to that negativity. Since it's biologically easier for us to notice the negative, it takes intentional effort to create a relationship where we have a higher ratio of positive interactions. That positive 5 to 1 ratio isn't something that just happens. We have to intentionally create an environment where that's possible. Also negative interactions have a much stronger impact on us, so we have to intentionally create powerful positive interactions. Stephen Covey called this the relationship bank account, meaning that every time we have a positive interaction, it's like investing money into that bank account. Then if we need to make a request or if we mess up, as long as we have enough funds in that account, our relationship stays healthy, even if we have to make some withdrawals. But if our interactions have too much negativity, if there are too many withdrawals like criticism and punishment and correction, then suddenly our bank account gets overdrawn and we aren't able to have the influence on our spouse or child that we'd like to have. So how do we create a cycle that keeps that relationship bank account full and healthy? We have to go out of our way to invest regularly. Here's a few things we can do. Make sure to express appreciation daily. Include praise as a frequent part of your interaction. So catch them doing good. Tell them the things you like about them. Be really specific about what you acknowledge as their positive attributes. Give them of your time. Make sure to have regular positive interactions. This includes simple things like eating dinner together or asking them about their day, making sure to go to their activities with them, or making sure to listen to them. Make positive family rituals. This could include daily activities like family prayer or family dinner, weekly activities like family game night, or annual activities like holidays, vacations, or, or trips to the family cabin. When you do have to make a correction or a complaint, make sure to do it gently. Be as kind and as positive about it as possible. These corrections or requests can actually turn out to be a deposit to the relationship bank account when they're done with love. If you're having a difficult interaction with your spouse and your spouse reaches out and holds your hand and says, gosh, this is really difficult, but I think we can work through it together. You'll likely feel better because their display of affection shows you that you're on the same team, that they're not out to get you. And that can turn out to be something that strengthens rather than weakens the relationship. 
Another way to improve your relationship bank account is to apologize often. Make repairs quickly and frequently when necessary. It's also important to show love in their love language. So I made another video on this and there's five main love languages. Find out what your partner's love language is and show love to them in a way that they find natural and easy for them. Give your person positive attention. Don't wait for something to go wrong before you pay attention to them. Make sure that you are creating these situations where you can have positive interactions with them and you're showing them that they're really important to you. Most people would rather be noticed, even in a negative way, than be ignored. So make sure to give your spouse or child positive attention so that they don't need to act out to get attention in any way possible. I've noticed this with my three-year-old, so if I'm giving a lot of attention to the baby, then my three-year-old will start acting out, maybe even in dangerous ways, to get attention, um, even if it's correcting attention. So at times, she would even like hit her sister just to get me to interact with her in an intense way. So if we go back to the story of Andy in residential treatment, that same pattern was happening. She was looking for intense connection with the staff, and the only way she knew how to get that was through these negative behaviors. When she felt empty or lonely, it was habitual for her to act out to get that strong connection. When she did act out, our staff were kind and gentle and they'd have a long conversation with her. And so her behaviors, her acting out negative behaviors, were actually an attempt to connect with our staff. And our staff were responding by connecting, but in a really negative way. So to change that dynamic, we had to intentionally take a step back, look at our part in this dynamic, in this cycle, and find ways to create positive interactions with Andy. One of the ways we did this was by setting a rule for ourselves that we weren't allowed to correct or punish or give a consequence to Andy until we'd had five positive interactions with her. So the staff were making sure to create these experiences where she was feeling loved and cared about without that negative behavior. Within a week of doing this, we saw a rapid decrease in her negative behaviors. When her negative behaviors calmed down, we were able to, through therapy, help her learn new skills and new ways to manage her loneliness so that she didn't have to do those negative behaviors anymore. By the end of her stay, she no longer had need for those negative interactions, and the staff could honestly say that she was pleasant to be around. So if you want to have a more positive and stable relationship, take the time to create a relationship ratio of at least five positive interactions for every one negative interaction. That's going to help you and your loved one feel closer and when needed, you'll have that relationship bank account when you need to make a request or a correction. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and take care. Hi everyone! I'm excited to announce that my Udemy course, Change Your Brain, is now live. So this is a two-hour intensive course that goes into the ways that you can change your brain chemistry without medication. So these are very practical skills that have been shown through research to improve mental health and combat depression, anxiety, and other mental illnesses. In this course, I teach the practical application of neuroplasticity, which is the emerging field of science showing that our brains are flexible and changeable throughout our entire lives, that our brains can actually change their structure, function, and chemistry um, by how we think and how we act. And this course teaches 10 simple ways that you can improve your mental health by activities that take only a couple minutes every day. So I, I've created this course because this is fundamental information that I think everyone should have access to. So please take a look at it. The link is in the description. It's on udemy.com and I'm including a coupon code. If you'd like to take the course for free, just send me a private message and I'll give you a code. So check it out. Thanks and take care.